Okay, this is an interesting question here about Deshaun Watson. Hey, Mary Kay. It comes from Jamie in Bethany, uh, Connecticut. Hey, Mary Kay. Reflecting back on last year's OTAs in minicamp when Deshaun was impressive in his own right, what looked different about this year that should have Browns fans more optimistic? And I, I was looking back um, at some old podcast headlines from last year. And even with as weird as everything was, we had some podcast headlines that were like, man, Deshaun Watson looks good, basically. So he did look good last year. It did feel different this year. So what was different? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly what I think is different. I think for the most part. Now, again, we know he's knocking off the rust. We know that he hadn't played in 700 days. But more so than anything, he's got an upgraded receiving core this year. And I think that means the world. I mean, when you're out there throwing deep balls to Marquise Goodwin and Elijah Moore is catching one-handed passes in the end zone and Jordan Aiken, your former teammate from the Texans, is making big plays for you. Um, you know, Cedric Tillman, once again, big target is out there for you. Donovan Peoples-Jones taking a step up from last year. Uh, I think that's all vitally important, and that's what I see going on. Deshaun Watson, for the most part, he's been playing this game for a long, long, long time. He hasn't changed that much since, you know, since he was playing at Clemson, probably. I mean, he's probably pretty much the same quarterback that he's always been, except for the fact that, um, you know, he had – so much on his plate last year in terms of his off the field issues that that impacted his on field performance. Um, and the fact that he hadn't played in 700 days, other than that, he's got plenty of muscle memory in that body. I mean, you're not all of a sudden going to see him not having good footwork, right? I mean, last year, I remember after every single practice, he would go walking down uh, behind uh, the far goalpost and just work on his footwork and his agility. And it's good. I mean, he reps and reps the things uh, that you need to do to be an amazing Pro Bowl quarterback in the NFL. And none of that has changed. He had it last year. He has it this year. Now he's knocked some of the rust off and he's got better personnel. And I, I just think it's different when you know you're the guy from week one. And I think last year, I mean, he had to be respectful of maybe respectful is not the right word. Right word. Of course, he's going to respect Jacoby Brissett, but he had to be respectful of Jacoby, the starter, because you knew at some point and you didn't know how long, but you knew Jacoby was going to start and he was going to have to be the starting quarterback. And Deshaun was going to have to kind of let him be the starting quarterback. And this year, it just you don't have that. Like this is Deshaun's team. This is his show. And I just watching out there, watching him interact and watching the way he carries himself, you can just tell that he's so much more confident in that and that he's just he's he's not ceding to anyone. This is this is Deshaun Watson's team. And it just makes a huge difference. Him knowing that that here on June 9th, he knows he's going to be starting in week one. There's no question about that. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. That is a huge, huge factor. Uh, they know that when they put him out there for reps, that he is the guy. And so they can act accordingly. You know, they can give him most of the work with the guys he's actually going to be playing with. And that's vitally important. And you know, you, you've got to get those reps with everybody because anything can happen. Um, but for the most part, you know, he's with the ones. It's Deshaun with the ones. And that is so key. And in addition to uh, you know, not knowing how many games he was going to be suspended for at this time last year. He also had still at that time, 23, 24 outstanding cases and, against him. And, you know, if, if that's not going to rattle you, then you're not even human. I mean, you know, if, if that's not weighing on your mind every single minute of every single day, then there's something gravely wrong with you. And, um, and he, you know, he did have that on his mind all of last year. And he doesn't have that anymore. He has two outstanding cases. Um, one, Lauren Baxley, she wants to go to trial. Nothing is on the docket yet. Um, so who knows? Maybe those two will even get settled. If they do, you know, then I think that, you know, even more so, he will be able to try to continue to move forward. And we must say this. This is important. He has worked very hard on himself. Uh, the NFL 
uh, mandated that he undergo a lot of treatment and a lot of counseling. And he has done that. And he, he says, when he says I'm healthy, he means he's healthy in that regard. Now he understands what's right and what's wrong. And, um, uh, you know, that's, that's good for him to acknowledge that he needs to get well. And so, so much of that now is behind him, or at least to a degree, never going to be completely behind him. We know that it will always be part of his story and part of his narrative, but he doesn't have as much of the legal stuff hanging over his head this year. Okay. Let's get to some, uh, some other questions.